Hi, welcome to the next channel. So recently I got uh, a query uh, from a student uh, from abroad. Um, uh, he is uh, doing masters or bachelors, I am not sure. Uh, his uh, question is all about, uh, he want to, uh, uh, you know, do his own uh, routing protocol implementation and um, something regarding that he was uh, asking me and long before uh, this incident uh, okay i was uh, teaching uh, uh, one of my student uh, uh, i think couple of years ago or something like that even something like that uh, had popped up in our uh, conversation during the session so he too asked about uh, how a network uh, routing protocol is uh, 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 being done or uh, can I do a custom uh, routing protocol and stuff so I thought uh, uh, you know answering uh, his mail again I thought it is quite complicated and also kind of I insisted uh, since he's just uh, doing his uh, college uh, uh, I found uh, he may be new to networking and uh, several things I insisted better you can uh, join for classes uh, before you know committing something like that and it is quite you know challenging stuff at the same time it is somewhat doable so i thought uh, let me cover this aspect in this video so that uh, it gives the sort of overall uh, big picture and also the architect's perspective okay assume you are even not a student you are working in a firm and uh, you have some type of a task or you need to understand any routing protocol okay hope you know this video helps you on a longer run so so let's start so <coughs> generally you have uh, uh, in a system you can do a route command you have this uh, static routing you can do this see you can see here uh, route command it it displays this static route and this static route is nothing but it's a data structure populated in the linux kernel and it uh, this command is pulling the same and it is showing it on the screen in a user uh, you know friendly in output okay other than that you can see here you have this uh, network manager or such ui tools okay you can go here you can configure here you can see here ipv4 settings i just set it as uh, manual settings not via dhcp and in this case uh, you can see here okay uh, you have this uh, gateway address and you have this netmask and stuff so based on that the you know address uh, uh, settings are set for the port if you do if config you can see there it shows that uh, uh, settings for the port but other than that it shows the default route and stuff like that so effectively the default route it gets it from this setting okay so that's what it is happening so you can see here i set uh, the gateway address as my router and i have set the dns router so the dns is of course uh, it's not going to effect it is nothing to do with routing whenever you open any website it is going to check uh, uh, you know <laughs> it's going to ask the dns routers uh, the ip of that corresponding domain if you go uh, www.facebook.com or something like that it checks the dns routers and uh, it picks the ip header uh, you know ip address uh, and from the ip address it can establish tcp connections and then uh, get access to that uh, website okay so that's what happens so same way you can see here you have this route command so when you do uh, any uh, routing you have this uh, static routing and as i always say a router is nothing but it's just the same as a pc but it's a dedicated uh, routing device so having that sort of understanding like i always say it there is no much difference when you buy a commercial router uh, versus you you know get this raspberry pi or even your laptop and uh, put uh, linux or something like that and uh, or even free bsd which is based on uh, uh, you know i mean you have pf sense which is based on free bsd uh, you make a router out of it so there's no actually there's no technically there's no difference okay you can make this as a router and there's no difference between uh, this versus any commercial uh, wi-fi routers you get it in the amazon uh, versus uh, any expensive routers like you get it in uh, you get from uh, cisco or something uh, they are uh, you know commercial data center uh, career grade equipment so uh, the routing and few of that uh, fast path is handled by uh, you know hardware uh, uh, chips 
okay hardware processor so it is not done in cpu like i discussed in a network processor and as well as the recent data plane control plane uh, stuff so if you haven't watched maybe you can watch the same but other than that either you do in software or you do in the hardware the process is the same so uh, technically you can do routing uh, with static routing alone the problem with static routing is the moment you connect more and more networks you need to manage them manually and which is why as a aid you can use optionally a dynamic routing protocol so this is what uh, the first thing you will learn in uh, uh, you know ccna course so the difference between static routing and dynamic routing is uh, see the first priority goes the administrative distance uh, there is a term uh, the administrative distance uh, it prefers static route entries suppose if there is a packet which arrives at this port and it has to be routed through some means okay so let's assume uh, this is connected with some you know let's take some record see you can see here i have this uh, wi-fi record or some gigabit ethernet card yeah. i am not sure where it is okay so let's suppose uh, take this uh, as ad an additional uh, you know nick card as you know it has its own internal uh, wi-fi you know port as well um it can be uh, you know wireless nick card it can be wi-fi uh, i mean it can be wired nick card an adapter via usb or anything so let it be anything uh, assume you have multiple ports connected to this raspberry pi so in that way what happens is whenever a packet arrives at this port the routing protocols tells how you can uh, route that packet okay to which port it can route the packet it has multiple ports and each port is configured in a different subnet and it has to take the decision it has come here and now how to process that part particular packet if there is no routing entry is there it will automatically drop that packet okay so there is no confusion if if someone knocks at your door and you don't know him and he don't know you it's a wrong number you are getting into in the phone you will say that it's a wrong number and you will disconnect that you know call so same thing happens here so there is a packet comes over any of these ports and it doesn't know what to do with that packet it is going to discard that packet as simple as that so that's what essentially happens so you have the static routes so this static routing table you can manually manage this table or you can have some uh, an, uh, you know software or application or something like that and it can uh, you know manage this table as well but here is the confusion see let me take to this uh, linux channel uh, youtube channel you can see here the recent videos i posted about this uh, you know network processor you can see here i have posted the part 2 as well and uh, before that i have discussed about control plane data plane stuff so uh, here is the thing see this uh, entire thing can be managed in the operating system like you can see here it is managed in the os uh, which is uh, going to exist in the linux kernel uh, you know layer i mean kernel space okay so this is a table which is uh, in the kernel space same way if you buy any commercial data center router an expensive cisco or juniper some data center router one thing is it is not going to do the fast path in uh, you know software layer or in the operating system instead such routers uh, does it in some hardware uh, network processor or something like that or some fpg or something okay so when it does that it will have this table but there will be a synchronization this table will have a mirror image in the software layer and whenever you do change any routing uh, uh, you know uh, rules or anything like that you will just sync it to that you know hardware uh, uh, processor okay or some fpga custom fpga so you do that and that takes care of the data path uh, of that data plane or the fast path of that okay so that's what essentially happens so you have this routing table and in this case uh, if you configure this linux system as a router uh, the os takes care of the routing part again don't confuse when you buy any commercial uh, switches you may have a you know console port you may have some service ports but these console ports uh, or console port is going to be attached to the os part whereas the service ports is going to be a part of that switch core and uh, there is no uh, you know uh, fast path exposed to the os 
okay so if you are confused with this term i recommend you to watch all this uh, you know four episodes so this is part one part two of uh, control plane data plane you can watch that and part one part two of this network processor again it's sort of extension of that you can watch that so i i do get a lot of queries uh, even uh, my students after we have some couple of sessions again they come up with the same uh, kind of confusion actually so so that's what okay so i recommend you to watch the same so like that you have this uh, routing table uh, you know uh, populated so that's what it happens so this routing table uh, you can do manually okay you can just do route command you can see here man route command and you have this add delete and all these options are there you can see here delete a route add a route and you can do all those things whereas in this case you imagine how this is populated means it is populated by a uh, user space tool called network manager and that's the ma you know tool which is also sort of you know taking care of this uh, settings via ui hope you remember if you go to some other linux system including raspberry pi you will go and edit some etc file and uh, when you do that and you run some uh, network uh, service restart something like that you do and then all the network settings will take an effect so when it takes an effect it is nothing doing but it's just syncing the settings to the kernel space uh, and uh, the kernel data structures or whatever it just uh, you know uh, accepts this change and it changes internally so that's when if you do some if config or something like that uh, and then uh, run a route command after you do all the changes it will reflect your change so either you do that way or do this uh, network manager or you have written any specific kernel uh, module and through the kernel module you have injected these changes it's all the same okay so that's what so that is what is happening so you get this routing table the my main point is you get the routing table uh, this way and it is managed by linux kernel so now you can uh, write some software in the user space and uh, this software can communicate to the neighboring uh, routing devices uh, through some dynamic routing protocol and you can run this protocol on top of udp because udp mimics layer 2 so udp uh, if you are not sure udp just to understand udp is a layer 4 service it's a transport layer service uh, but udp works like layer 2 so udp works what layer 2 provides okay so but udp you have the application layer on top of the transport layer in this case of when you use an udp okay whereas in the case of tcp it is cumbersome it establishes this session and then uh, once the work is done uh, still it will send all this act packets and it is going to be very chatty so which is why any dynamic routing protocols usually they use uh, uh, the protocol on udp or sometimes they put on directly on top of ip itself okay so you will have ip address and then directly on top you may have some OS uh, PF or something like that. I'm not sure about OS PF. I'm generally saying some sort of architecture you will find. So you'll have L2 Ethernet header, and top of that you will have the IP header, and top you will have some routing protocol directly on top. Or you have other option is you have the L2 header, you have IP header, you have uh, UDP, and then you will have a routing protocol, uh, you know, header on top of it. So you can use anything, uh, any way you want. You can construct. The objective is you can share and you can chat with neighboring devices, neighboring routers.